So, you want to introduce somebody? Here's how you do it. I'm not gonna lie, that last one was pretty embarrassing to edit. All right, what's up guys? My name is Jacques or JQ, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to make this character intro freeze frame effect. Now, it's pretty simple to do. There is a little bit of work you have to do with some masking, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. Break this effect down, all you're gonna have to do is have a main subject, some text going on behind him, and then also a background to go behind both of those. So let's go ahead, hop in Premiere, and I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. So I've already got my clip loaded into Premiere here, and uh, I've already made a cut basically where I wanna have that freeze frame effect going on. But if you uh, don't have that, basically all you have to do is make sure to get to that keyframe, hit C, cut it up a little bit, and then you have your video isolated so we can actually add some effects to it. So to begin, I don't really want a lot of uh, video basically to edit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate one second out, and then we're gonna elongate that one second with some speed duration. And to do that, I can currently see that my clip is at 20.33 seconds. So all I'm gonna do is drag my playhead forward a little bit till we get about 21.33. So roughly about here, that's close enough. Go ahead and make a cut again to this. And you can go ahead and just clear this stuff out. You're not gonna need that clip anymore. But what you will need to do is uh, right click on the clip where you actually have your main subject. Uh, go ahead and go to speed duration. You're basically gonna slow down how quickly Premiere plays all the frames. So in my case, let's see, I think maybe roughly around 23%. You're gonna want it to be basically where your duration is about four seconds, so we have enough time to have this effect going on, basically. Uh, we're also gonna change the time interpolation to optical flow. Next, we do the really fun part of masking out the entire thing. Now, you do have an option to where if you have a green screen, go ahead and shoot this behind a green screen and key out the green just to make your life easier. But what we're gonna do is an option that everybody can do. And it kind of sucks, but basically we're gonna mask out our entire body. Now, the way that I like to do this is actually separately mask out certain parts. So in this case, we're gonna be masking out our arm, we're gonna be masking out our head, and then we're also gonna be masking out our body. Now, the only two objects that are really moving are our arm and our head. So that's the only mask that we're gonna have to animate. So our body just it's gonna be simple and trust me if you break it down into these pieces it makes it a lot easier so to go ahead and begin masking we're gonna left click on our uh, clip on the playhead go to effects controls go down to opacity and then uh, take this little pen and then we're gonna get to start drawing okay so what we've done here is basically masked out enti our entire arm in the coffee cup make sure to go ahead and add a different mask for all of your moving parts so in my case all I have to do now is go ahead and hit the pen tool again and it'll start selecting another mask at which point I can go ahead and mask out my head and the rest of my body so now we've masked out our entire body, but uh, we don't really wanna do the boring stuff of going through every frame and masking it again. So I'm gonna show you a little tip here. Uh, go over to your effects controls again, go ahead and select any of your masks, basically the ones that are moving. Uh, right now we're gonna have our arm selected, and what you're gonna do is uh, go ahead and move your playhead up a little bit and hit this arrow. And what it's gonna do is track the entire mask for you. And there you go. As you can see, Premiere's gone ahead and tracked the entire mask for us. Now this mask is not super smart, so there may be a couple spots where you had to go fix the pins wherever your masking's at, but for the most part, this is gonna be pretty good. Make sure to go ahead and do this for the rest of your body parts that are moving. In my case, it's only my head, so that's all I have to do. Now we've done all the masking and the tracking, which is the hardest step of the whole effect is just isolating your subject matter from the background. Now we're gonna go ahead and move into our text. So super simple, just hit your T key, click anywhere on your preview window. I'm gonna have mine say JQ, and uh, let's see. Now since we've got our text in, go ahead and hit your V key, which will allow us to select this text and then uh, adjust it to whatever size or rotation we want. Uh, let's see. That looks about good. Now this is technically all you need to do for your text, but I like to animate mine, so I'm gonna show you how I animate my text to kind of come in really quickly and then slowly move throughout the entire thing. So, so go ahead, select your text on your timeline, come to the top left effects controls, uh, go ahead and hit the stopwatch. Now this is the frame where we kind of want our text to end, so we're gonna drag this towards the end, right? Uh, we're gonna move forward kind of close to the beginning of the timeline, but not the very beginning. Uh, we're going to add one more keyframe here and basically we're just going to sit here and we're going to move the text over to the left a little bit that's basically where our text is going to stop or like slow down when it comes into frame uh, drag our playhead all the way to the beginning again like vector motion again and then completely drag this text off the screen now there's one more tip here we're going to go back to this middle keyframe use your arrowheads to go over about one frame and then add one more keyframe with this diamond now we're gonna add a bezier to this. So basically it's gonna come in really quick then it's gonna slow down and just kind of 
slowly move throughout the rest of the effect. To do that, we are going to select this left keyframe. We're going to grab this circle, move it as far left as possible and as far up as possible. Then we're going to go to this little circle here, circle here on the right. We're going to grab it, move it as far left as possible and as far down as possible. So let's see what it looks like. Moves in pretty quickly. I think that works. And then it slowly moves throughout the rest of the effect. And there's your text. You can go ahead and add another text at the bottom. I might add one for mine. But now you guys know how to do it so you can make it say whatever you want. So now we've covered our main subject, we covered our text, now we're gonna cover our background, which this one's pretty simple. I've personally gone ahead and made a background that I was wanting to use for this effect, so we can go ahead and take a look at it. It's not really anything special, it's kind of something I just threw together in Photoshop. So for my case, I'm gonna to need to get rid of this video file because it's just in the way, it's not really doing anything. We're gonna move your background to the very bottom. And personally, I think this would look a little bit better if we rotated it a bit and made it a bit bigger. So to do that, we're just gonna to go to the effects controls in the top left, select motion, we're gonna get these outlines. We can just drag it open a little bit, rotate it a little bit. And then one more small effect that you can do to make it look a lot better is come over to here to effects, look for roughen edges, which will be under stylize. Go ahead, drag it onto your background. And what it'll do is roughen the edges basically. So what I like to do, this is rough, but I like mine a little bit more rough. You're gonna go down to roughen edges, go to border, go ahead and uh, let's say 30. I think 30 is a good number. That works, yeah. Adds a little bit of texture to it. Now, that's it. So now we've added our main subject, we've added our text, and we've added our background. This is the entire effect, but I'm gonna show you how to make this look a little bit spicier to add that little extra touch to your project and make you a lot better of an editor. Personally, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and make your subject grow a little bit. So now we all have to do is select our main subject in the project, go ahead and move to effects controls, go to scale. Uh, we currently have ours at 50, but you don't want this thing to grow a lot or to move a lot basically. So let's go ahead and set it at a uh, 55 near the end of the, end of the frame, move your keyframe to the very end and uh, a slow grow. That's exactly what we want. So after our slow grow, we're gonna go ahead and add a color behind our background. To do that, all you have to do is come here to the bottom left, go ahead and ahead and click new item, go to color mat, and uh, make sure it's 60 frames per second to make it really smooth. Now, I think a yellow would be a really good color for mine, so we're gonna go ahead, select this eyedropper tool. We're gonna grab this yellow in the background, hit okay, color mat. Now we come over to the project files on the left, go ahead, drag that color mat under everything, and there you go, you have a background for your background. Another thing I wanna to add to this effect is a paint splatter effect. Now, I just went on Google and found a random one, but basically go ahead, drag it into your timeline so it shows up behind your object. Now, you could just leave it here and it'll look all right, but what we're gonna do is make it show up like the paint is being splattered right behind our subject. So to do that, we're gonna go here and we're gonna set up another mask. Now, this one's really simple. All you have to do is just hit this ellipse tool, make it to where the ellipse is basically covering behind your entire main subject. Then this is one keyframe at the very beginning. Go ahead and hit the stopwatch drag your keyframe forward a lot and we're going to animate the mask again we're just going to literally drag it out as far as possible now what this will do is show up like the paint is splattering now this is very very slow and maybe you want a slow effect but in my case i think i want something really fast so all we're going to do move these keyframes together really quickly like and there you go that's the paint splatter so that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, let me know down in the comments below if there's an effect you want me to cover in another video, and uh, make sure to go check out my main channel where I put a lot of these effects into use. And until next time, peace. Are you serious? Oh my god. Why would you do that?